So hi, and welcome to Poetry Passages. I'm Clifford Rames, and I'm so excited to announce the launch of a new mini-series of readings called Gather Around the Woodpile, a devotion and celebration of the life and poetry of David Budbill. In partnership with the literary estate of David Budbill, over the next several months, we will welcome a number of special guests on Poetry Passages, people who knew David Budbill and adored his works, to discuss what David meant to him, to them, and to recite a favorite poem or two. For anyone who is not familiar with David Budbill, David was a small town poet and playwright from Vermont, where he lived in a small cabin in the woods for over 40 years. The New York Times described Budville as a latter-day Thoreau with a dash of Walt Whitman and Carl Sandburg. For those who were fortunate enough to know David, he was the people's poet, a gifted storyteller and creative tour de force, a beloved voice of the Vermont mountains and a passionate warrior in words for peace, justice, and equality. During his prolific career, David authored eight books of poems, seven plays, two novels, a collection of short stories, two picture books for children, dozens of essays, and the libretto for an opera. He also served as an occasional commentator on National Public Radio's All Things Considered. David loved to write, but he also loved music, occasionally performing with jazz composer and bassist William Parker. Joining me today as my special guest is Scott Renzoni, aka Renzo. Uh, Scott is a poet and actor originally from Northern Vermont who currently lives in the Berkshires. Hi Scott. Hello. Hello. So Scott has appeared as the character David in two productions of David Budbill's play Judavine. Judavine is the story in a series of poems about the inhabitants of a small town in northern New England. Judavine has been described as a new American song, a song of the down and out, the neglected and ignored, a song of the unsung. Thanks so much for coming on the program, Scott, and for taking the time to share with us some of your memories and stories about David Budbill. Oh, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. So tell us, how did you, how did you meet David Budbill and kind of what was your relationship with him? I met David in uh, 2007 when uh, a place called Lost Nation Theater in Montpelier, Vermont, was putting on a production of Jew Divine. And David was uh, serving as a, um, I guess you could say consultant on that particular production. And uh, he, he ended up um, having it filmed to uh, sort of be his, his uh, archival mm -hmm. performance of it, to have it uh, preserved. And so I knew uh, him through the rehearsal process when he would be there with us, uh, working, on, working on it, uh, giving his input to us and to the director. And um, he, he uh, it was, uh, very touching. He, my, his, his, his opening night note to me said, I've never enjoyed my own words in Judavine more than I am this time with you doing them. Uh, and uh, that, that really, it, you know, it, it struck me to the heart and, and it's, wow. it was one of the best moments of my career as an actor. Uh, certainly. He wrote it. Uh, he wrote um, a note. Yeah. Yeah. You still, you still have card. it? You still oh, have of course. It? Of course. <laughs> what a memento. Yeah. Oh. Got, it, got, it, got it right there. Oh, wow. Awesome. Got it right there. And um, I, I uh, was in touch with David a bit in the, uh, in the years after that uh, by email. Um, went up to the house once for tea, which was great. Nice. Um, and and uh, always knew that Judavine was something that I would always want to come back to in my career as uh, a, as an actor, because it's just that rich a text that it can be done over and over. There's there's no way to 
to finish it. Mm. Um, it's it's an ongoing process. It's a it's a verb of a play, uh, definitely. And um, I, I would correspond with David about uh, Judavine about my own poems, uh, which he was very generous to take a look at and comment on. Uh, and after David uh, passed away in 2016, um, the same theater, Lost Nation, uh, decided, well, you know, we've, we've got to remount this. We've got to bring this right. production back. Uh, so, so they did. And uh, I was able to, to be in it again with most of the same people from that original production, which, nice. was, which was great. Yeah. Awesome. So you have, I'm sure, very fond memories of David, and, and, and you mentioned the one about him writing the note. Do you have other stories of, of something that sort of sticks, sticks with you even now about David Bloomville? Well, I, I liked very much uh, um, how he kept his work and the reality um, at, at a respectful distance. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked him once, uh, could you tell me where so-and-so was in, in Judavine? I'd, I'd like to go have a look. Um, and he said, well, no, you know, the, the play is the play and, and the, the, the real place is the real place. You know, th right. those are, are sort of separate. And uh, we went back and forth uh, mm -hmm. in email about that a little bit until I think he um, decided that that I got it. Mm -hmm. And so then he did say, well, such and so was the inspiration for this. And, you know, that was so and so's garage, that that kind right, of thing. Right. That was that was great. Um, and and uh, he he was always very kind and generous whenever uh i would reach out and you know to 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 share a poem or to say you know i heard this is happening i'm going to try and come see your reading and it was always lovely to hear from him and and, and see him when he gave readings in town and right, right. yeah so just so folks know um Ju the judavine which is a fictional um place and it's a, a reference in this book here um was most likely the area around where David spent his 40 years in the cabin, which was Walcott, Walcott uh, Vermont, um, sort of very rural area up in northern Vermont. And, and you've been there, huh? right? right? Oh, right, yeah, Scott? yeah. yeah. I, I visited him in, in, the, uh, in cabin the cabin up to Walcott. And um, the, the poems uh, began in uh, around 1970. Mm -hmm. um, and for a good 20 years uh they evolved they first appeared in things like uh why i came to judavine right and uh autograph copy chainsaw dance yep. and uh hope cutter's nativity uh which which you can only find in in used shops these days right um until you know the the, the big collected the big of them out. came out yeah. yeah and the poems uh the poems and the play evolved uh, together. Uh, I saw when I was quite young, maybe 11 or 12, one of the first productions of Judavine. Wow. Um, and I remembered for, for all those decades, uh, the impact that it had on me, these, these words and the immediacy of them, the passion with, with which the actors spoke them. Um, and, and so to be able to be a part of that myself mm -hmm. all that time later was, was, was something else. And so the play evolved along with the poems. More poems would happen. They'd go into to the, the stage version. Um, someone on stage might throw in a, a comment, an ad lib or something, and everyone kind of agrees, well, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? Okay, great. And that would find its way into the, uh, the right. final text. So it's always, it's always evolving. Yeah. So yeah, so the poems evolved and the passage that you chose to read for us today is um, an example of that evolution. It's not word for word something from the book, but it is 
um, a sort of piecemeal version of stuff from the book that was put into the play. Is that correct? Yeah. It. Uh, what. What. What I'm going to give you is um, a, a bit from from near the end of the play, uh, and segueing into a poem which is in the book uh, called "Driving Home at Night," mm -hmm. and uh, the play itself uh, features about 25 characters. Right. And those can be played by an ensemble of any size. Uh, we, our productions, the ones I was in, used six and then seven actors, uh, respectively. And uh, so there, there's so many possibilities with any production of the play. Um, and it's been lovely to be in, in, in close touch with Lois and Nadine as... Uh, as they and we try to get the play out there more mm. and, and, and get get people to notice it, it's really um, a latter day our town. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's it has it, yeah. it has that potential, and yeah. uh, it, you know, it's been produced nationwide. And although in some ways uh, there are bits of it that are almost a period piece because of the 1970 to sort of eh, early 90s-ish 19, yeah. setting, um, it's still so powerfully relevant. These people are still out there. Yeah. They still live in their shacks and trailers, uh, right. you know, on, on, on the banks of the rivers. They still, uh, you know, work at the gas stations. They still try to make it work. So, you know, it's... It's a play that, you know, I, I can't wait to be in it again. I don't know where or when, but I can't wait to do it again. Right. And so for folks who don't, who maybe don't know, when I say that you played the David character in Jude Vine, who is the David character? The David, the David character, um, just like all the other uh, 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 characters are somewhat pulled from life with with David's own poetic license, the character referred to as David in the show um, is based to an extent on David himself. Right. Uh, he, he narrates, uh, he observes, he does also interact. Um, there's one uh, scene where he's interacting with the woman who owns the, the junk shop in town Mm -hmm. And she says to him, when, when are you going to let it, when are you going to let me read some of those poems? And he says, well, I don't know. And she says, well, I hear they're about us. And he says, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, you know, I'm and in trouble he now. says, well, maybe, maybe I'll show them someday. Uh, and, and apparently I, I never ran into anyone um, intimately connected with David, but uh, there, there were, and I, I, I gather still are. Uh, some folks up in that neck of the woods who who knew him and had varying opinions about, you know, this fella writing poems kind of based on us. <laughs> uh, right. Know, uh, and maybe uh, thinking so and so in the play was them. And <laughs> yes. And we, we did have a uh, we did have one of uh, one of the people uh, who who was portrayed in it came came to the show. And uh, we all agreed afterwards that boy looked just like we thought she would, didn't she? <laughs> um, and then there was another uh, fellow who's who's still alive, I believe, on whom the character of Antoine is based. And um, there's there's a lovely passage in the book, and not in the play, where he talks to David about, "I hear you, I hear you made a play about all this," and and David says, "No, no, it's only based on you, and, and no one could ever, you know, be." you uh and and david told us that over the years he kept on saying come on come on see this and the guy just <laughs> couldn't quite make it he said well you know I, I i just don't think i could see myself up there so right right ah right. <laughs> oh, that's cute um so for now we totally recommend the book jude vine it is an epic series of poems that um goes through more or less a 20 year period in, in the lives of people in this Northern, Northern kingdom of Vermont. Um, so you've selected a, a passage to read today and just kind of tell us a little bit more about what you're gonna read and then you can launch into it for us. 
Yeah, this this happens near the end of the play, um, and the ensemble uh, comes together, and uh, the little sort of prefatory material that I that I added to this little selection uh, is often divided up between the characters and and the actors on stage. You know, makes for a lovely combination of voices and these people that you've been seeing for the whole play um, almost but not quite releasing that character being mm -hmm. being themselves um, and and it it uh, goes into the last poem in both the play and the book which is called driving home at night um, which is sort of a a, a benediction for for Jude divine and um, and a way of, of David, the character, and in a way the poet, um, staking his claim to to Judivine and and saying, "This is home. This is this is my place." Right. Awesome. So, uh, well, can't wait to hear it. There we go. Um, no matter who lives, who dies, the seasons never rest. Creatures take their turns and the year turns and turns and turns. In spite of all that could be wrong and is, in spite of all the pain, summer and winter and summer and winter and summer again, all is change. There is no constancy. No matter who lives, who dies, summer and winter, in summer and winter, creatures take their turns, and the year turns and turns. All is change. Midnight. Outside the car is 15 below, a foot of new snow. The village is deserted, dark except for eight street lamps and the light in the window at Jerry's garage that says, beer. <laughs> The smell of wood smoke seeps into the car. Jew Divine. Ugliest town in northern Vermont. Except maybe East Jew Divine. Disheveled, wretched Jew Divine. My town is beautiful in the night. It is beautiful because its couple hundred souls have given up their fears, their poverty, and worry. And for a few hours now, they know only the oblivion of sleep. And the town lies quiet in their ease. Hmm. Wow. I was, I was there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, delighted I made it through without breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a little crackle in your voice. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, every time. it's very, uh, very touching. Thank you so much, Scott. Of course. Um, so I was going to ask you about, you know, if you could, if you had to select one David Bunville book or poem to take with you on a desert island, but I suspect it would probably be Judavine because it's all there, <laughs> but there I, are so many great books. So it's so, it's so tough uh, yeah. because so many of them are, are just such a part of, of, of me as, as a reader, as an actor, as a poet, right. uh, you know, as a, as a Vermonter. Um, I mean, a lot of them uh, were, were published by uh, Copper Canyon Press. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe, maybe the publishing gods are, are listening somewhere. We could have a, uh, you know, collected, collected poems. That'd be nice. You know, Something like they did with them all in, like they recently did with Jim Harrison. In exactly. Sort of box exactly. Can with we essays have a, and, Oh, that Can we would be have awesome. a nice collected yeah. volume? Yeah, because like uh, just as you said, so many of his books, uh, uh, so much of your life, kind of live within his books. So much of David lives within his books. I mean, there you read his poems, and you you really you feel like you get to know David, and it's it's something remarkable. Well, it's it's interesting you say really that special, because yeah. in the second production that I was in, uh, we we did a little promotional video uh for the you know the local indie tv thing and it went out online uh and and one of the actors said david's here 
Mm. David's here. He's, 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 he's probably with every, you know, production, but uh, you know, it's, it really feels like he's here, uh, you know, with us yeah. as, as we do that. And because it was so intimate and so personal for him, uh, it's, it's an amazing honor uh, as an actor to be able to inhabit that role uh, and, and, and bring those words to life. Mm -hmm. There he is. And I feel like he's with us today. There he is. Yeah. Doing this. And thank you, Scott, so much. This has been wonderful. I mean, uh, we'll have to do it again. You'll have to read some more. I know. Yeah. Later on in the series, maybe I'll be back. That would be fantastic. As, as I said to Lois when she uh, wrote me a, the initial email about this project, I said, when it comes to anything, David, my answer is tell me when and where. When and where, where and yes, so. indeed. Yes. Well, thanks so much. I really thank appreciate you, you Looking coming forward on. To the rest of it. Yeah, me as well. Thank you. So thanks so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this first edition uh, in this series uh, um, of our celebration of the life and poetry of David Budville. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. And ciao. Stay safe and stay well.